back for another installment of Theories in Swim Baiting. But this time it's gonna be a little bit of a twist because I'm gonna revisit an older article that I put on the Working Class Zero site uh, maybe three years ago or something like that. And it was called The Quest for the Cure. I wrote it at the time because I felt that a lot of anglers that were just getting into it, and let me just say that first, is Quest for the Cure is more geared towards guys that are just getting into it. Maybe it'll be a good refresher for some guys that have been doing this for a while, but for the most part, Quest for the Cure is geared towards newer to swim bait guys. And the reason for that is I feel like the newer guys often exhibit behavior where they attribute more of their fish catching to what bait they're throwing versus their actual knowledge of the water they're fishing. And to me, that's the wrong approach. And what I think that's kind of done is, you know, helped capitalism breed in the sense in the, in the swim bait industry where guys are attributing value to baits that may not necessarily be there. Now, I'm not talking about the guy that's in his garage pouring baits because that's a craft. It's his labor. He can charge whatever he wants. It's an art form, however you want to put it. It's a day rate. However many baits he can create in a day and he values them at a certain thing, I have no, no say in that. That's his deal. What I did have beef with at that time, and I still kind of do, is mass production lures being sold at high market prices that are comparable or higher to the man that's in his garage making a lure one at a time. I feel like the cause of that, and this is just speculation, I don't have any data points, I don't have any, I don't have any real information that points it, it's just my two cents. I think the cause of that is new anglers and some guys that have been around for a while willing to pay whatever for a lure because they think that's gonna be the answer to why they're not catching fish. At any rate, I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole too much. I wrote that article. That was kind of why, but at the same time, I wanted to slide in some info that I think would help point guys in the right direction. What are the, the, the basic steps you need to take in order to get going in the right direction? So I'm gonna reference the article here, kind of just go through the bullet points of it, uh, and I'll provide a link so you can read it for yourself. But here we go. Number one on the list is choose a home lake. You wanna find a body of water that you can consistently fish that holds a good bass population that other anglers are successful at and that you actually enjoy fishing. Once you establish that lake, commit to fishing that lake for only a year. My belief is, is if you commit to fishing just one body of water and you experience it throughout the entire course of a year, you'll start to understand patterns in that lake that other anglers do not. Because you're seeing the full breadth of the year seeing where fish are moving, when, where, what time of day, water clarity, all these things. It paints a full picture for you. So commit to a home lake and stick to it. No lake hopping, one lake. It's hard to do for a lot of guys, but I strongly recommend it. It is more valuable than anything else. Just one lake, whether it's throwing swim baits or not, one lake. In that course of year, you wanna work on certain things like finding out where all the cover is, the structure is, where grass lines grow, where tule lines grow, trees, all that stuff. You wanna find all that stuff and how those fish relate to them. Once you kinda of narrow down all those spots, what you've done is you've eliminated all the unproductive water and now you're gonna focus solely on high percentage areas. And the only way you're gonna do that is if you focus on one lake all year long. Side note, I'm at two years in on a lake right now. I've gone a trip here and a trip there, but for the most part, I've put a ton of trips on one lake and I'm still trying to wrap my mind around what these fish are actually doing. Cause I have no clue. It's kind of rhyme or reason like, uh, I think, I think, I think, I think. There's nothing that's become a pure predictable pattern for me yet. It's enough about my failures for the time being. We'll just go on to the next one. Less is more. In my opinion, I think it is key to success to, to bring only a handful of proven baits. You know, make sure you have just, an, just enough of a variety that you can cover all levels of the water column through whether it's a soft bait, soft bait with a boot tail, soft bait with a wedge tail, and then you get into your hard baits, whether it's a glide bait, a wake bait, multi-piece bait, that's gonna kinda, it's all you really need to really start figuring out where fish are at while you're eliminating water. You don't wanna get sidetracked by having 40 or 50 different baits in the boat and constantly switching out, no. 
find some proven baits that you know catch fish for other guys and only fish those. Really start to understand when those baits work best. A lot of that can depend on water clarity, water temperatures, time of day, whether it's a dark bait or a light bait. There's so much depth in this that you really have to spend the time and commit to something to know when it works and when it's not working. There's no better explanation for this stuff than time on the water. The only way you're gonna find that out is if you actually go through the motions. Next one, number three, and this is what I'm struggling with right now. I knew I was gonna be digging into the trenches. I didn't realize I was gonna be digging in this deep, but number three, being mentally prepared. When you're trying to learn a lake, it can be exhausting. You may get a couple of good spurts there where you're like bang, 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 and then it just all disappears. You have to be mentally prepared for those dry spells. You have to be just prepared to not catch fish for quite some time while you're trying to learn it. Establishing what is an actual good spot versus what looks like a good spot. I mean, you can look at examples of guys that are highly successful in swim bait fishing, trophy bass hunting. They're not lake jumping. They stay to one lake. They know that lake like the back of their hand. In my opinion, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you wanna catch giant fish, pick a body of water, stick with it, and be prepared to get into the trenches and ride it out so you can gather as much information as possible so that once you have that whole grander vision of what's going on, you can start being far more effective with your time on the water. Number four, and this is, I think a lot of guys are bad at this. We just think we're all great, you know, great at remembering things, but notes, notes, and more notes. You know, keep track of the the sun, the moon, when it's setting, when it's rising, water levels, water clarity, water temperature, all that information. And then start diving into fish sitting on certain spots, what time of day they're sitting there, what positions they're at, how they behave. All this information is key so that next year when you swing around, you can start predicting certain behaviors in those bass. You've already done this, the whole process of eliminating unproductive water. So now you want to actually ramp it up a little bit more by predicting their behavior and coming into those areas and targeting them effectively and efficiently based on your notes that you took the, the previous year. Those notes will also help you determine patterns in how fish are reacting to certain baits that you've been consistently fishing, what time of year those baits were more successful. And our minds are crazy because they'll play tricks on us where you're like, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure those fish were they're drilling this bait at this time of year. I do this all the time. And then I look back at my notes or I look back at the videos or photos and I go, oh, I'm about two months ahead of time right now. Our mind and time, they'll play tricks on us. So those notes are so key of like, okay, I gotta stop getting restless. I'm a little bit early right now. The reason why I know, I have the data right there. It's telling me. So keep notes and then more notes. There's no such thing as too much information when it comes to chasing these giant fish. Next one, number five, establishing a milk run. I've already kind of touched on this a couple times in some of the other talking points, but once you've kind of narrowed down specific spots that consistently hold fish, you want to try and work through hitting those spots at different times of the day with different boat positions and different baits, all just to kind of establish how these fish react. If you're catching fish in the process, that's great. But the goal here is to find out how those spots fish best. Once you've established your milk run and you've already kind of worked through boat positioning, bait retrieve speeds, all that good stuff, you should get to the point where you can predict fairly accurately at what time of day, where on that spot, those fish are gonna be ready and willing to eat. That's the point of like establishing that milk run. That's the end goal of it. Focus in on those spots and hit them, boom, 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 different times of the day to start narrowing in on that window of when those fish are gonna be there to eat. One spot may pop off at noon, another one might pop off at two, one might be an early morning spot. You gotta start hitting all of those rather consistently to figure out when is their productive window. If you're just kind of stumbling across them throughout the day, it's just luck of the draw. You really wanna turn this into, I can predict when and where those fish are gonna be and willing to eat. That's when you're gonna be very productive and you're gonna be getting good rewards out of the time you're spending on the water. That's what we're out there doing, chasing giant fish. We want to take advantage of the limited time that most of us have. 
last and it is kind of least, but number six, geared for success. You wanna make sure that you have the right tools to do the job. That means you wanna have the right reels, the right rods, and then taking it even further, you wanna make sure you have a net. You wanna make sure you have a live well that's working if you're in a boat. If you're not in a boat, maybe having a stringer so you can let that fish kinda of swim around once you catch it. Make sure you have a scale. Make sure you have a camera. We have the Working Class Zero measuring boards. That comes out of me not being geared for success. I didn't, wasn't prepared to measure my fish of a lifetime, my personal best, but you wanna think about all this stuff in advance and make sure it's ready to go for that day that you do finally catch your fish of a lifetime. You don't wanna be looking back on it and going, oh, I wish I would've had this and I wish I... Get all that stuff prepared now. That's it. Make sure everything's working properly before you set out in the day. To wrap the whole thing back up is, I firmly believe that once you commit to a lake and you really start to understand that lake, you will become far more successful than other anglers that are lake hopping. There's no pattern to, to be had when you jump from lake to lake to lake if you don't know anything about the lake. You have to commit the time. And once you commit the time, your success rate will go way up. Once you've established, okay, I'm somewhat successful with these techniques at this lake. I understand why the fish are moving there, or at least I think I understand why the fish are moving there at this time of year, at this water temperature, using this bait. Take those techniques over to a new lake because now you've established this lake does really well for my style of fishing at this time of year, but this time of year is kind of dead. So maybe I'll go experiment at a different lake and see if that lake pops off at a different time. So eventually, you can set yourself up to have a milk run of lakes at different times of years. So then you have milk runs of lakes with milk runs of spots that you know fairly well. That's the game that I try and play. I think that's the game that other guys have played for years and it's proven to work. I think you can just look at the history and look at guys that have been very successful in trophy bass fishing and they target one lake and they know that lake like the back of their hand. So I'm urging guys that are just getting into it to follow in that same path. Pick a lake that works for you and fish only that lake. Think with doing that, you'll be far more successful in the long run. You'll learn how to fish bait. You'll understand how bass are moving through the water at different times of year. I hope that makes sense. I hope some guys maybe hear that and maybe agree with it and decide to go that route. That's what I did. Looking at other examples of guys that have been consistent and caught a lot of big fish. So give it a try. That's kind of it for the time being. That's kind of quest for the cure in a nutshell. Uh, there's so much more depth to it you could really go into, but I think for the time being, that's a great start. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Throw some comments down there. Maybe I'll follow up with a feedback video. And if you like what you're watching, subscribe. We really appreciate it. And until next time.